Good morning, James. Morning, Deborah. How's things? How's all we eat? Things are good. Thanks very much for helping me out this morning. Uh, this is That's James it. Perry, and he has uh, come along today uh, to talk to us about um, preparing for exams and, and study and give some advice to our young people. Um, so before we go any further, James, tell us what you do for a living. Oh, Deborah, it's a, it's a funny, funny job that I do is I am an exam coach and I'm a specialise in accountancy. So I'm an accountant. I'm a chartered accountant is my trade. That's my profession. And I worked in it for many, many years. Um, I've seen a slight gap in the market in terms of exams for accountancy students because they're very, very tough. So I've now decided to turn that into a career and to help as many as I can around the world. So that's really what I do. OK, thank you. And what inspired you to become an exam coach? And I know that you're also a bit of a motivational speaker. Yeah, yeah. The exam coaching. Where it came from, previously I've lectured in Queens and I've lectured in University of Ulster as well. So I always enjoyed that. And also, Deborah, I worked uh, as a trainee. I qualified as a trainee chartered accountant uh, with Grant Thornton in Belfast. And what really I loved was I loved helping junior accountants. And then whenever I progressed through the ranks there, I became senior manager in Grant Thornton for about 10 years. And the, the greatest job satisfaction for me was helping the trainees. Um, on top of that, then I got a succumbent to Grant Thornton's National Training Centre in London. And that's where the instead of lecturing that was where the the trainer or the coach came into play and where you're actually one-to-one -one really helping people and, and small groups etc so that's really where what really inspired me for that because i really you know i'm in i i've got a lot of empathy that's that's a lot of my makeup and i love helping people and that, that's the main reason why i became an exam coach motivational speaker that just came up out of the blue um i was asked mm -hmm. a few talks over the last couple of years and i think i've got a well, uh, I've quite a good story to tell people and, you know, I've had, I've came through a bit of adversity in my life and if I can use that to help anyone at all, if anything I can say can help people, hey, that's, that's job done for me. So that's, uh, I really enjoy it as well. I actually have gotten to grow to love public speaking too. So yeah, that's a uh, exam coach stroke motivational speaker and I think you would definitely if you said that to me 10 years ago no mm -hmm. no way I would have been doing that so yeah mm -hmm. but I well, always think it's always think it's great just to speak to people outside of the classroom because young people obviously spend a lot of time with teachers but it's nice to just you know get that outside perspective from other people so what advice then uh, would you give to a student on preparing to study and prioritizing what they have to do Two massive things that I see, Deborah, all the time from especially my student clients. Number one is that organisation is key. Organisation of your notes is the first point. If you don't have your notes organised, what are you going to study? You're not going to study effectively. So priority number one for, you, for anybody looking listen to this is get your notes in order. Get them each topic into a folder. Get those folders organised with dividers and then divide those subjects into individual topics and ensure you know where every section is in every folder. So if you need to drop an index for each folder, go and do that. The organization is definitely key. The second one then is to draw up a study plan or as what I call my clients, a life plan, which is a huge thing. So people think they have to study all the time. Yes, you have to study a good bit, but there's a difference between study and what I call quality study. And if you can study quality study, you actually can study less. So you can put that into a, into a plan where you know that you're going to be with your friends. You know that you're going to, you know, go to the gym or go to the, that football match or go to that hockey match. You know that you can spend family time and study. But if you put that into a really, really good, clear plan and stick to it, that's the key thing. Because I see many people with the most beautiful looking study plan in the world, but they don't <laughs> The key is to stick to the thing. Mm -hmm. So those are the two things. Strong study plan you stick to and have those notes really, really well organized. Mm -hmm. Very good advice. Um, <clears throat> as a teacher, I know uh, that we have all different ways in which we prefer to study. Um, can you offer any suggestions on effective study techniques that you have tried and tested with your own student study and accountancy? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I'm actually doing, I'm developing a learning style questionnaire actually for my students today. And it's broken down into four areas and I call it VARC. So it's visual, audio, read and kinesthetic. And I'll explain what kinesthetic is in a minute. But so for uh, let's talk about a couple of those areas. So visual, mind maps work a lot for, for a lot of my students. And that they summarize a the topic. They have it on an, a, a big sheet, whether it's an A1 or A, whatever the, the big sheets are, put it in front of them. And it's in a notable place. It'll be your bedroom or in the kitchen at home. Mm -hmm. um, anytime they walk past it, they automatically get a refresh on that topic. Um, it works massively for people. Next one's audio. So, for example, accountancy, if you type in accountancy study or a specific topic into YouTube, um, there's lots of stuff. So what I tell people is to get a, a YouTube to MP3 converter, get the MP3 and put it onto your phone and whenever you're walking somewhere, you can mm -hmm. actually listen to a lecture or listen to a, a refresh of a topic or some of my clients drive and they listen to, to it in the car. Mm -hmm. um, Read and write. Well, good old read and write is the way that I used to study, but I very much changed in terms of you read your book and then you write a summary of what you've just read on 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 a page. The other thing I would suggest, Deborah, is to hide that then, and then to close your eyes and see if you can re if you can remember that then in your head as well. So that's read, write, and hide. And then the last one is kinesthetic. So I'll give you a quick story of what happened to me. I used to think I was very much a read and write and hide learner. And whenever I went through university, I basically got a textbook and I thought I was learning by reading out the whole textbook again. <laughs> but I found that we've all done that. We've all done that. And in university, you maybe get away with it because you've got so much time. But whenever I got into the world of work, I realized, oh, I don't have as much time anymore. I have to get really um, more efficient in my study. So I realized then, Deborah, that I was a wee bit more visual than what I thought. So I used to photocopy key pages out of the textbook. I used to highlight those key um, paragraphs. And then I used to do laps at the kitchen table while talking out loud and reading out loud to myself. And I realized I was much more efficient doing that. So I was visual, I was audio, and I was kinesthetic. I had to walk. So I was a mixture of all three learning styles. I think probably most people are a mixture of all st learning styles, but you may have one that's a particular preference that you enjoy, without a doubt. Um, I love the one about uh, downloading the YouTube clips, to, uh, converting it to MP3, because obviously our young people walk around now. I know I have two sons. They walk around the house with the headsets on all the time. You have to shout and wave to be heard. But, I mean, that that's brilliant method for them to be able to use so thank you for that okay. um all of us are guilty of procrastinating so how can students break this habit oh procrastination is this new modern buzz term it's this happy you know fantastic term um but i don't really like that term i call it a either laziness <laughs> or, or b you don't make it a priority so if you're procrastinating on something, either you're being lazy on it or you're not making it a priority. It's not high up on your, your list. And if you're doing exams, I think, uh, you know, it should be high up on your list if, if you want to take your career forward or your life forward. So a few things I would say, first of all, to anyone out there is the first 15 minutes of study is always the most important. So if you can really be determined that, OK, I'm going to start this task for the first 15 minutes. Mm hmm. Invariably, what will happen is you will have it, you will keep on an hour down the line, you'll still be at it. So tip number one is get the first 15 minutes done first and you will you will progress. Second one is and this is a hard one. You may need you might need to say no to people. Very so hard for young people. If your mates are saying, look, come on out and do whatever, you might need to say no. I've got an exam today or tomorrow or I have an exam next week and I need to study for it. So maybe turn maybe turn the Wi-Fi off so they don't get their messages, okay. huh? <laughs> I'll give an I'll give an example with this good old thing, which is the number one thing for for not making things a priority. Oh, I, good, had, good. I had a client of mine who was off eight weeks for study. He was doing his finals for Charter Accountants Ireland, 
and he said that he had his phone on constantly beside him. I told him to give his phone to his dad every single day, and his dad took it to work. So therefore, this client of mine didn't have the phone at all. So that was a, a massive thing mm-hmm. for him, and it really, really helped him. The last thing I would say, Deborah, in terms of procrastinating or not making a hobby, is give yourself a reward at the end of your exams. Give yourself something to aim for. Um, another example, this is maybe an extreme one, is I had a client who finished her exam at 2 p.m. one day and went straight to the airport and went to Estonia at 5 o'clock the same day. Uh, so she, whenever she was studying and things were getting really, really tough, she mm-hmm. had that in her mind, okay, I've got a goal to aim for, let's keep going. Mm-hmm. So there's a few tips, hopefully, that'll get people once they're Yes. Uh-huh. Is a, well, maybe it'd be for younger people. It could be a day, a day up in the tree and the way to the port for the day or something like that. But could just give, give, give yourself a reward. Turkey fried chicken tonight or whatever. <laughs> That's a great reward. <laughs> okay. Um, well, you've maybe covered some of this already, but what are students' biggest mistakes when it comes to studying, do you think? What do they do that really just mucks it up for them? First thing I think is the most important, Deborah, is they don't believe they can do it. It's the fear of, well, it's actually both. It's a fear of failure. And it's also the fear of success. So the fear of failure, oh, I am going to fail all these exams, or the fear of success, I don't deserve to pass these exams. It, it all boils down to the same thing, which is getting your mind right about all these things. You know, what I would say to any student or any client is there evidence before that you can pass an exam? And 99.9% of people will say yes. Or go, mm-hmm. why are you doubting your ability now? So you can't you can't do it. That's that's a big mistake that I see. I actually believe you can do it. Second one is giving up exercise, which I think is a huge important thing. So whenever I done my GCSEs, for example, I was playing a lot of football. And okay, I didn't play as much during that time. But I made sure I kept on playing football. I, I made sure I kept doing something. And that is where this life plan comes into play I, I was talking about previously. Mm-hmm. If you put it into a proper plan, you can do you can do it. So keep on exercising because once you stop exercising, those good endorphins that go into your mind and help you study and, and keep you fit and healthy and active and learn, they stop. So yeah, keep on exercising. And then the other thing is eating too much rubbish. The number of times, and I'm very guilty of this myself, that I had a big dinner and then went and studied. And what do you do? You automatically become tired. And you just want to lie down. You just want to lie down. So, <laughs> you know, just be smart about when you're eating and what you're eating at certain times. And, you know, the science has said that nuts and fish and drinking loads of water and all is actually really good for, for study. I actually put a post up on my social media started the was it yesterday or was it last week that lemon water actually the potassium in the lemon water helps mm-hmm. you retain more helps your memory yes so do you, do you have a an area on youtube that might be useful for students i don't have it not on youtube but i do have a podcast okay a podcast on study on yeah it's called the accounting exam coach podcast Mm-hmm. And you can get a lot of general tips and advice there. There'll be some things purely on accountancy, but there'll be some things on tips of how to pass an exam and tips of how to study. So there's loads of stuff on Accounting Exam Coach podcast and also the website, which will be up and running in the next couple of weeks, Accounting Exam Coach. And I have lots of blogs on exam tips and study tips there too. Brilliant. Thanks very much, James. Well, here um, at the end of the day, we all study for a reason. Yeah. Um, what are the rewards of studying hard at school? I'm not going to say money yet, but I will say a couple of things is that number one makes you grow up. It really makes you grow up and it gives you all these life lessons that, you know, it makes, it shows you that you're committed to something. If you've got a goal that you can actually do it, it shows you that you've got discipline. It shows you that, you know, you can take a small pro. It's actually like project management. Every subject that you're doing and every exam you're passing, if you can study and do as best as you can in school to the best of your ability, 
there's a good old saying, you want to be the best version of yourself. And by doing that, it certainly helps that. The next one that I would say, Deborah, is that it, it gives you lots of credibility. And that is not just in terms of job, the job front, which it certainly does. But again, as a person, you know, if you're talking to other people, you know, you, you, you feel good, you know, you, that you've got these qualifications. Mm-hmm. And then the last one, yeah, definitely jobs and, and money. You know, if, if you can do well in your studies, it shows employers that that you mean business, that you that you want to do well in your life and you want to do well um, and get a good job. So certainly there's loads of things, loads of rewards and loads of reasons why you should study and, and work hard to do well in your exams. Mm-hmm. What if things don't just work out as you plan? What advice would you give to somebody? Say I, they failed something, what advice would you give them to move forward? The good thing about failing, and failing gives you lots of positives, uh, and that's the thing. I see a lot of people, Deborah, beat themselves up a bit failing. Look, it's happened. You can't really change that fact. It's what you need to do is sit down and think about why you failed and improve in those areas. So, again, with a lot of my accounting students, they will come to me and say, I failed in a particular exam, and they'll say, why? And I'll go, because I didn't understand this topic or this topic. And I'm going, well, okay, you now know what you need to really focus on for the next time, don't you? Mm -hmm. So it's what you learn from failure is the most important thing. And what I would say, Deborah, is is not don't beat yourself up or don't worry about things. If you put in hard work, that's a lot of, you know, it really counts towards what's going to happen to you in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, hard work is the most important thing. Thank you. And finally, you're well known in the business world for your inspirational quotes. James puts up daily posts on his Facebook page and and other accounts there. Um, can you offer one to our young people out there who have examinations approaching? I'll give you two. I'll give you a bonus one as well. Oh, excellent. First one is um, motivational quotes don't work unless you do. So people can read all the quotes of the day, but if you don't have that plan or work hard on that, you can read all the quotes and it won't work, but you need to work. The second one is from a guy who I really admire, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And his most famous quote was, you can't climb the ladder of success with your hands in your pockets. Mm -hmm. So again, it means you (laughs) you have to work hard. Very good. Excellent. Well, listen, thanks very much, James, for joining us this no morning. And uh, and I hope our young people will be able to take something really positive away from that. All right. Take care. Thank Catch you very much. Soon. Okay. Bye now.